So, where we left off, we actually had just finished up the point where I have met Greenheart for the first time. However, that's still the end of what we can do here in Green. Over <laughs> the last one we can do in Lean Box. So, we're gonna have to go back to Lowie. Again. Yes, this gets. It, it's pretty much like that. You just travel back and forth at, oh, doing the different events as they open up so that you can continue the story. Which reminds me, I need to check to see if Lost Station's event had finished up. Apologize for the lack of commentary for the last video, but just like this video, there's not going to be that much commentary because I've already talked about pretty much everything I need to talk about for the time being, and so I'm only talking as I need to. It's a little annoying if I were to go off on some random tangent about something else when the game is still playing. It's just very distracting. It would be better for me to sit and be quiet than it would be for me to continue talking over the game. And that's how I'm going to treat it at dull points. I'm not going to talk at points where I don't get to talk. The enemies in the maps that you, where you switch back and forth are really good at dropping other items other than reflexes. Early in the game, the majority of the items dropped are reflexes, which allows you to build up your reflex item stockpile, which is useful for keeping yourself alive. But outside of that, all the different buff items and things, you don't really get to use them quite that often. And there's not really a reason to use them. And here's the actual opening to Laoi. But as I was saying before, there's not really a reason to use them all the time. You pretty much only use them whenever you're preparing for boss fights. And the majority of the time, you're, I don't actually think there's going to be a point where you're actually going to see me use the buff items. Because there's no point. Also, unlike Lost Station, we're not going to have this moment where we run into Blanc and Vert in their CPU forms. Or, well, we are. We're not going to have the moment where we spend time with them outside of the party, like they become amnesiac like Noir did. And the reason why is because we already seen their faces, so we know who they are. Unlike, we don't know who Blackheart is yet, but we do know who both Greenheart is, because IF has seen her, and we know who Whiteheart is. So, we're not going to have that kind of storyline here. The way they, the way that Whiteheart and Greenheart figure out that Neptune's not so bad is a little bit different than the way that Blackheart did. And at this one point, Blackheart, we already know that Blackheart is doesn't see Neptune as that bad a person anymore. We saw that in an earlier episode when she became amnesiac. <laughs> Downside is a lot of the dungeons in Lean Box, and some of them in Laoi actually, are pretty long. So at this point in time, it might be best for you to go ahead and start using Monster Call. It'll save you a lot of time in the long run. I'm also running around the sides and not taking the stairs portion because it shortens the time that you spend running, which makes you have less encounters. And it's a trick that you actually pick up when you're doing these 
side quest dungeons, because the side quest dungeons are timed and you are ranked based on them. intelligence skill. It's actually based around games and you can actually recognize a lot of the icons that they use. It's really interesting. There's an Ultra Beast one. Uh, I don't even remember the one because it's very rare that I see them, but it's very rare to see these attacks because they, outside of the fact that they are DX skills that stop the clock, everything's pretty specific as to what elements their wiki gets. And they don't tend to help all that much. So you rarely ever will see those skills. You won't see those skills again until a way, way later video. Probably not even the gameplay videos. And if you're playing the game, you probably use them all to see them all, and then you stop using them. So, this boss is a little mean, because right after you fight that boss, you have to fight another one. And interestingly enough, I actually like Blanc's CPU form. It's, it's really interesting, in comparison to the others. Whereas, Vert's is more fan service than anything else. And Neptune's, while well, Neptune's and Noir's are very similar. So, between the CPU forms, Blanc is probably is my favorite, which is interesting because she's kind of meh all other ways. Her personality isn't that interesting and her battle prowess isn't really that high, especially in comparison to the other CPUs. But I'll be going into more detail about that when I get to that video. show something off. Yes, I did want to show something off. I wanted to actually show off this skill. Now, we saw in a way earlier video the extended version of Neptune's skill in the regular form. This is it for CPU. It is an extended version to every DX skill, I believe. I'm trying to remember if there are elemental attacks. But all the goddesses with all of their skills have extended versions as well. And oddly enough, Blox is actually very interesting. I like her. Which will be very interesting. It's very useful. And incidentally, Vert is especially the same. Her EX skill is probably my favorite out of everyone's EX skill in the game. But you will never ever use it because for some strange reason, the creators made Vert's EX skill physical, and she's more of an intelligence character, so go figure. So the EX skills you will see the most are also the two most boring, which are Neptune's and Noir's. However, just because they're boring doesn't mean they're not powerful. Doesn't mean that they are, are not powerful. But is that right? Yeah. Anyway, Neptune is the most powerful fighter in the game. Noir is a close second. I 
So, after doing that, we finally go back to, we, we try to go back and see Whiteheart. However, she's not re receiving any guests, so we have to So, IF has a chance. Has a option. <laughs> I IF has a plan for what to do at this point in time. And this is when IF actually reveals that she's a part of the guild to the party. We already know it because we've been through Leanbox already, but yeah. She is a part of the guild, which means that she has a CPU that she likes more than the one that she was born for. And at this point in time, it may actually be revealed that I have was born on Laui instead of Green instead of Planet 2. It's either one of those two. I don't think she was born on. I'm not even sure if they actually reveal where I have was born. We'll have to look into that because I'm not necessarily sure. But we already know which one she likes. So we get to see a little bit more about the guilds and how they operate, especially since they operate out of what we the it says all the guild members are stuck on Laui, the way that it works is there are different best comms in every city, and whenever a guild member is caught in Laui, they're taken to the main Basilic Com. There is as a matter of fact, the financier, who is the person who works directly under Whiteheart, is a member of the guild as well. She works for Whiteheart, but that's not the one she follows. Anyway, what happens is, guild members, when they are found, they're brought to the main Basilicom. However, guild members at the main Basilicom actually escort them out because there is are tunnels that lead to each individual basilica. So effectively, they help, she's one of the ones that helps them escape. And there's a city for, there's a main city called Guild City where it's ruled by, oh, excuse me, it's ruled by actual guild members. So it's an actual, it's a very easy way to get around a big problem. But due to the fact that all Basilicoms are linked to the main Basilicom, that means that they can also get back through there. But apparently, guild matters. Well, guild matters aren't nearly as bad in the future because I know this is a little bit of a spoiler, but I'm not necessarily sure if I'm going to LP this game. The next game in the series, Mark II, the guild is actually common knowledge. As a matter of fact, Histoire works at is the leader of the guild in that game. And there's in there in every city, so it's, I'm not necessarily sure if it's common knowledge or if it's just because you know guild members and IF is a high ranking one and you work directly with Histoire, who's as a matter of fact, if Histoire is the leader of the guild, then yeah, there's not really a reason why am I rambling right now for it to be hit. <laughs> Yeah, remember when I said earlier that Laoi is one of the, probably one of the places where you want to start using Monster Call? Yeah. 
It's very helpful. Especially lane boxes. Lane boxes have some incredibly long dungeons that can be a serious pain. But Laowee has some powerful monsters that you have to worry about. Not as bad as Lost Station. The Lost Station has the strongest monsters as far as I can remember. So you really want to be careful there. These just tend to have a lot of HP. That's the big thing about them. You can also buy all those items, so you don't necessarily have to get them. It, the buying system in this game is a little bit annoying. You just have to, there and you just have to spam the right button all the way up until it finally fills your item bar up. Yeah, it's a little annoying, and I might show that I've been in the shop, but I have. Yeah, I've been in the shop and I've shown you how it is buying. It's not really that fun in this game. It could be worse, but it could also be a lot better. Long, awkward silence, long, awkward silence. <laughs> So, effectively, Whiteheart has figured out that Neptune is amnesiac. Is am 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 amnesiac. I'm almost having trouble but uh, pr pretty much she's really just trying to confirm what's going on how she feels uh, how Neptune really is ホワイトハートさんやくさずいたな。ホワイトハートさま。女神様なんだし、変になってないじゃん。でもですね、she but this would be easier if they actually showed her sprite on screen during this conversation. Which I don't really know why they did.
見た感じは同じだけどなんかあんまエッタのことは口にしない方がいいわ Now, we've started, we stopped on this before, but there's extremists and there's moderates. The moderates just want to choose which CPU they want to follow, whereas extremists hate all other ones and they hate all other people who like them. So, uh, effectively, they're like, no one other than us. And if you like somebody else, you need to go die. So, extremists are pretty much just as bad as the Archbishop. And we have the Vati Bishop. You can walk around some trees, like this one, so you can save a little bit of time, but you can't walk around all of them, so just be aware of that. Monsters called Cleons, and I've mentioned this before, but they are water monsters, weak to earth, and that's how you break the guard. They have a ton of HP, but they give you a ton of EXP. So that's where you'll be grinding if you want to. They can be incredibly tough, though. And that's the other purpose of Monster Call, which you rarely ever use it. Well, you'll rarely ever use it at this point. If you're trying to 100% the game, something very important to know is there's more than one type of Cleon. Cleons are separated by their EQ and the experience that they give. They sometimes even drop really nice items, so I would recommend taking down some of them. But there's like seven different versions of Cleon. So effectively, if you're trying to get that trophy and trying to 100% the game, every single time you see a darkened circle on the ground, you use Monster Call. Eventually, you'll cast them all, and just to be safe, it helps you build up your levels and your strength. You know, something I really should have mentioned in the first video, but that was when I had a whole bunch of things to go over. Now the game will sometimes trick you this way because normally you will only have walls in your way if they're where you're supposed to go. Sometimes they'll put walls in your way in other places and I really should have checked before I went this way by using the treasure search. But I was almost positive this was the way I should have gone and it actually kind of wastes a little bit of time because you have to sit there and you have to wait for the hammer to finish cooling down. <sighs> <laughs> That's what red is good for. And her design isn't that bad. I actually like red design. I keep saying that because I really don't like red. She's a terrible character. She should go play in traffic. This is the first time the conversation 
Yes, I think it's not conversation. This is the first time that the financier meets Neptune in her CPU form. And party rotation. That's another, well, I guess it's not really breaking the fourth wall, but it's another game this term. In, in this game, it doesn't really matter that much, because you don't really have a party rotation in this game, because there's not really people to swap out. But effectively what it is is the party rotation is swapping out your characters for different characters for multiple reasons. You can use them to try to keep your party balanced or because you found a character that's more what would be the word, effective at what they do. For instance, in the next game, swapping out Kampa for... Gust, who deals a ton more damage and heals a lot better than Kampa does. At least at like level 30. Sounds oddly horrorish. Horrorish. Sounds like music that you hear when someone's being chased with body. Knife wielding evil maniac. Go ahead, monster call here. I really should have done it in the opposite direction. Whoa, actually, no. Monster calling wasn't a bad idea. I think I mentioned this in the last video, but I'll probably reiterate. I'll just go ahead and reiterate it. After this video, or maybe it might be after I get all the key fragments. I'm thinking after this video, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the recruitment for all of the characters. And the recruitment for all the characters can be a little annoying. No, it's going to be after I get all the key fragments because this it's harder to get Gus and Nisa until after you get all the key fragments because some of their events won't. Because I don't think my Nisa events have popped at all. And not have my Gust events. My Lyrica and Red events have popped, but I don't plan on getting Red anytime soon. But I'll, I'll be recruiting them, and that's going to be all one separate video. Because it's, it's pretty much just a group of events. I may even cut out the dungeons in between, because there's not going to be very much to talk about during that video. I might actually just start cutting out the dungeons, period, because the dungeons really are the points where I'm just sitting here and just talking to them. You see what the dungeons are like, so it would effectively only be for story purposes that I would show certain bosses. Like, the messenger, and the CPUs, that's pretty much it. And actually, at this point in time, well, I guess she doesn't know that this is what the CPUs feel like. But I was about to say the CPU should, that Neptune should have done this with the CPU. But it's still is such a shame that Blanc is practically so useless in this game. And the reason why Blanc is useless in this game doesn't have anything to do with our stats. It's the way that the battle system in this game is built. And it's interesting. I just beat it without going into my CPU form. But anyway, the way that the battle system is built, and I'll go ahead and explain that because there's not too much story-wise going on here. Is the defensive system isn't fully completed, so your resistances don't really matter. Your defense 
sort of doesn't really matter. Your HP is pretty much the only defensive thing that really matters in this game. The same sort of goes for the offensive. There's two different types of attacks. You have, they call it magic attacks, but they're not because you're using bullets. So you have physical attacks and you have elemental attacks. And the elemental attacks don't really make too much of a difference. They suffer breaking guards. The difference between their attack powers is elemental attacks don't deal that much damage. So, in comparison, 9 out of 10 times we'll be using physical characters and physical fighters because they deal more damage. The elemental fighters are only better for, are only good for breaking guards. And it's, the battle system feels really incomplete not really polished and due to the fact that that's one of the three things that you spend the majority of this game doing that's pretty bad it's very terrible I mean the dungeon system is technically finished even though you will be doing the same thing over and over and over again so it's kind of tedious but the battle system is really incomplete and not finished there's so much that could have been done with the battle system to either make it more interesting or to give it a little bit more strategy but effectively until a certain point it's just like build up build up build up break the opponent's guard and then just start smashing as fast as you can and guard breaking is even worse in this game one time it sounds like complaining but it's because i had the opportunity to do this guard breaking in this game is once you break their guard, the opponent's guard, there's a set amount of time when their guard is broken, you'll do more damage. Until they get back up to a full guard, and there's nothing you can do to slow that gauge down. It's the gauge right below the enemy's HP. This is terrible. The reason why is because if you happen to break the guard before, at, let's say the last person whose turn is going to be, let's say if you have Neptune, Kampa, an IF in your party. Kampa is normally the last person to go before it's the enemy's turn. So if Kampa breaks the guard, then the enemy's turn starts and their guard is still recharging while they're dealing damage. And they just eat up a lot of time with a lot of their attacks, even if you skip them, so you lose a lot of valuable guard broken time. It's really an ineffective system. Mark II does remedy this with the way that they do their guard system by whenever you would, it's not a set amount of time, it goes by turns, and as you attack them with guard breaking attacks, their guard break gauge stays down, or drops down further if it's already been broken, so it takes long to come out, and effectively, you can stagger them in a guard broken state. But the way that it's done in this game is just terrible. And when you get to the point where you no longer need to guard break, you'll be so much happier. And I really should use Monster Call in this area as well, but for some strange reason I did. Oh, I did. Near the very end. I actually have a pretty long way to go, so I'm not really surprised that he did it there. starting to come up on the end of this episode so I'll be signing off shortly I think it's either after this event or the next event I wish I could show off a little bit more of the item skills, but you're most likely not going to see any item skills throughout the entirety of this playthrough. If I make... I do have... I stated this in the last episode, but I do have two videos planned for the very end of this that's going to show the ranking system, who I believe are the most useful 
between both the situations. But I'm also considering doing a video explaining the battle system. And if I do, then I will show some of the item skills. But I have no plans to do that. Well, I, I have an idea of doing it, but I don't think I'm, I may not do that. Anyway, we finally get more story after running around for 15 minutes. So, we run into a heretic, and he's deep into this dungeon, and he's surrounded by monsters. And if you remember from before, when we defeated monsters around the heretic, he got mad. So, this person is mad as well. Or for some strange reason, because the Overlord is going to destroy this world. We're trying to figure out why. If we, the heretics believe, if you keep releasing monsters, then the Overlord won't destroy the world. But anyway, before he runs off, he drops the disc. And there are discs in the treasure chest that give you different skills and everything like that. But when you step on this disc, you break it. But these discs are very important. What's inside these discs are actually monsters. Which is really bad. So this actually tells you where the monsters come from. The monsters are coming from the heretics who are making the monsters so they can prevent the overlord from destroying the world. Why? How would this help? It, it really doesn't, but I can't explain why the heretics are making monsters without breaking this story open, so we'll wait until that's explained a little bit later. So we meet this person again, and this person reveals himself to be the Overlord's messenger. Okay. And due to the fact, uh, due to what we've been doing, she decides to come in and attack us. Okay, there's more to this, and I'm really having to hold myself back from telling what the actual story is. But normally all of our fights are fairly difficult when you face her your first time around. Once you new game plus though, this she, she becomes a pushover. But she's the only person who can withstand a full powered CPU not turn break. Which is kinda crazy when you think about it. But apparently, she's stronger than she seems. Okay. And Kalpa actually says something incredibly intelligent to her. She says that she's not necessarily sure that that's actually the Overlord's messenger or if it's some kind of a And everyone in IF goes, well, why is everyone after Neptune? We already know that, but let's just go ahead and say it. Neptune is the CPU of Planet Neptune. No one in the story seems to know that, except for all the other CPUs and the messenger, apparently. Anyway, I actually think this will be it for this episode. Hopefully next time will be a little bit more interesting and we'll have a little bit more things going on, but this is Suike Novus finally signing off for the night.